I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert and this YouTube channel. Now in this video, you'll discover the nootropic benefits of phenylethylamine, or PEA. Now this is an update to a video I made on phenylethylamine several years ago. You will learn why we use phenylethylamine as a nootropic supplement. You'll learn what it is, how much to use, how long its effects last, and how many times per day to take or use phenylethylamine, its potential side effects, and the best place to buy phenylethylamine. Now, by the way, do not make the mistake of buying phenylalanine instead of phenylethylamine, or PEA, because it's not the same thing. And it's easily overlooked when searching for this nootropic. So please do not ask me about this in the comments section below because I will not respond. Got it? So why should you listen to this video about phenylethylamine? Well, because PEA is the base for MDMA, or ecstasy, LSD, mescaline, and methylamphetamine, which I am not encouraging in this video. But you also produce PEA naturally in your body, and you get it from certain foods. So stay with me for a few minutes, and I'll tell you more about phenylethylamine. Before we get started, how about subscribing to this channel and hit the share button so others can learn more about nootropics and how to fix their own brain. So let's get started. Phenylethylamine, or PEA, is a trace amino acid. Your brain naturally converts phenylalanine into phenylethylamine. PEA is at the, not at the top of most nootropic stack choices because its effects are so short-lived. But some neurohackers love PEA for its stimulant and mood-enhancing qualities. The most famous promoter of phenylethylamine was Dr. Alexander Shulgin and his wife Anna. Dr. Shulgin published PICAL, A Chemical Love Story, in 1991. PICAL is short for Phenylethylamines I have known and loved. Phenylethylamines are a group of phenylethylamine derivatives which contain PEA as a backbone. Now, these derivative compounds are formed by replacing one or more hydrogen atoms in the core structure. This class of PEA compounds include amphetamines, empathogens, stimulants, psychedelics, appetite suppressants, bronchodilators, and decongestants, and antidepressants. Now, one of the more famous PEA derivatives is MDMA, or ecstasy. Now, Dr. Shulgin developed, tested, and published the formulas for 179 different compounds, largely based around the structure of PEA in his book, PICAL, spelled P-I-H-K-A-L. Now, in this video, we investigate how phenylethylamine works in the brain. So let's spend a minute or two so, and talk about the neuroscience and how you produce PEA naturally in your system every day. And now we can use it as a nootropic supplement. Now recall that phenylethylamine is, is a trace amine, naturally synthesized from L-phenylalanine in your brain. Aromatic amino acid decarboxylase converts phenylalanine to phenylethylamine. Now this is the same enzyme that converts phenylalanine into dopamine and it converts it at a rate comparable to the synthesis of dopamine. But PEA is not retained in neuronal vesicles like dopamine is stored. Instead, monoamine oxidase B quickly degrades PEA. Now, despite its short half-life, PEA as a nootropic seems to be effective for increasing catecholamine activity by boosting dopamine and norepinephrine. PEA can be found naturally in, many, in cacao, algae, fungi, and bacteria, as well as clover, beans, peas, and some food products like natto and eggs. PEA is also found in chocolate, where it's produced during cacao's fermentation and roasting process. PEA binds to C-protein coupled receptors TAAR1 and TAAR2 receptors reserved specifically for trace amine use. Now, these receptors are not used by other major neurotransmitters, like they are dopamine and norepinephrine. The half-life of PEA taken as a nootropic supplement is only 5 to 10 minutes. 
because it's quickly degraded by monoamine oxidase B. Now, many neurohackers prolong the effects of PEA when they use it as a nootropic by using it with a monoamine oxidase B inhibitor, like selegaline, or also called eldepernil, or hordenine, or oatstra. Phenylethylamine boosts brain health and function in several ways, but two in particular stand out. First, phenylethylamine decreases depression. PEA naturally boosts the feel-good neurotransmitters dopamine and serotonin in your brain. Studies have shown that depressed patients, when tested, have lower levels of PEA. In fact, some suggest that a PEA deficit may be the cause of depression in the first place. Now, one study had 14 patients with a major depression take up to 60 milligrams per day of phenylethylamine, along with 10 milligrams of selegaline or aldepernil, for up to 50 weeks. The researchers found that PEA produces sustained relief of depression in a significant number of patients, including some unresponsive for standard treatments. PEA improves mood as rapidly as amphetamine, but does not produce tolerance. And then second, phenylethylamine is a mesenphalic enhancer. PEA is considered a mesenphalic enhancer, which is defined as an enhancer-sensitive neurons in the brain capable of working in a split second on a high activity level due to endogenous enhancer substances. Now, this means that PEA stimulates the release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin in the brain. But unlike stimulant drugs like amphetamine, which release a flood of these neurotransmitters in an uncontrolled manner, PEA instead only increases the amount of neurotransmitters that get released when a neuron is stimulated by receiving an impulse from a neighboring neuron. In other words, the pattern of the neurotransmitter release is not changed, but when the neuron normally releases a neurotransmitter, a larger than normal amount is released. The result is nearly instantaneous improvements in cognitive performance, attention, awareness, pleasure, libido, and a sense of well-being. Now, phenylethylamine is an endogenous or natural or built-in amphetamine. This mechanism of action is how prescription ADHD stimulants like Adderall work, and the basis for many Schedule I drugs like MDMA and LSD and mescaline and uh, methylamphetamine. Phenylethylamine, or PEA, quickly crosses the blood-brain barrier once you take it, and you feel its effects right away. Activation of TAAR1 receptors inhibit the uptake and induces the release of dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. It's like turning up the volume on neuron activity. A higher concentration of all of these neurotransmitters increase feelings of pleasure, it boosts motivation, it improves memory and cognition, and it reinforces impulse control. A PEA naturally maintains and regulates neuronal activity preventing over- and under-stimulation. When working is designed, PEA and other trace amines prevent metabolic dysfunction and neurological disorders. As a neurotransmitter, PEA acts like and looks similar to amphetamines and produces effects normally associated with taking a stimulant. But unlike amphetamines, and because PEA is endogenous to the brain, side effects and tolerance are avoided. Now, PEA works in an area of the brain associated with emotion. This results in feelings of pleasure, more drive and impulse control, heightened creativity, and better sensory perception. PEA improves libido, social behavior, and a sense of well-being, and better overall performance. PEA is currently being studied and used for the treatment of ADHD, depression, bipolar disorder, cognitive dysfunction, like brain fog, and poor concentration. And PEA looks promising for treating addiction and eating disorders. PEA is rapidly broken down by monoamine oxidase B. So unless you stack or combine PEA with an MAOB inhibitor, don't expect, expect its effects to last. Most experience a peak within 15 minutes and sustained energy for 30 minutes to an hour. Now, if you're ADD or ADHD, 
you should see an improvement in mood, intention span, focus, and mental clarity. Not quite the same effect you'd get from something like Adderall, but with the side benefit of more sociability. Now, neurohackers report taking an MAOI supplement 15 minutes before a PEA dose, and the effects should last about two hours instead of 15 minutes. And there's no crash like you'd normally experience with a stimulant, just a general feeling of well-being once it wears off. Now, some have reported PEA helped kick the habit of phenobit or caffeine without going through withdrawal. As a pre-workout supplement, PEA provides a more intense and focused workout. Older neurohackers seem to feel even more benefit when using PEA, likely because monoamine oxidase levels overpower dopamine the older you get. And using PEA, especially with an MAOI, helps restore dopamine and other neurotransmitters that are typically depressed with age. Now, PEA is a great nootropic for study because you should feel less anxiety. There's fewer panic attacks and there's less stress. And more motivation, a better mood, easier to maintain focus, and more energy. In some report, food cravings subside, and it's easier to lose weight. Depression is the second leading cause of disability among ages 15 to 44. And by 2030, the World Health Organization predicts depression will be the leading cause of disability worldwide. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, are the most popular antidepressant prescribed worldwide. SSRIs work by blocking the serotonin transporter and inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin resulting in an increase in serotonin in synapses. But the problem is SSRIs are slow to act and come with a host of side effects. Phenylethylamine may be an alternative to SSRIs. A study done in 2008 showed that PEA alters serotonin transporters, interacting with TAAR receptors, increasing serotonin levels by preventing their reuptake just like prescription SSRIs. The study suggested that PEA may be a safer treatment for depression than SSRIs. The diagnosis of ADHD has traditionally been done by analysis of symptoms, but measuring PEA levels instead has recently been described as a possible biomarker for diagnosing ADHD. This discovery of a relationship between PEA levels and ADHD has excited researchers because it will hopefully improve levels of confidence during ADHD diagnosis and reduce misdiagnosis and overmedication. One study of ADHD children medicated with methylphenidate, or Ritalin, has significantly higher PEA levels when using methylphenidate. PEA binds to the TAAR1 receptor, which alters monoamine transporter function, and it leads to the inhibition in the, of the reuptake of dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, which then increases the concentration of these neurotransmitters in neuron synapses. Now, this increases synaptic concentrations of dopamine that can be accomplished directly by blocking the dopamine transporter, which is how drugs like methylphenidate work to boost dopamine. So if you are ADHD and crave chocolate, it's likely because cacao supplies PEA. Some naturopaths are beginning to prescribe PEA instead of stimulants like amphetamines or methylphenidate to treat ADHD. Phenylethylamine, or PEA, suggested dosage for cognitive benefit is 500 milligrams up to three times per day. PEA has a half-life of 5 to 10 minutes, but the effects of PEA can be extended by using it with an MAOB inhibitor. If you do use a potent MAOI like selegaline, make sure that you keep the dose low, like 2.5 milligrams, 2.5 milligrams, or you're in danger of inhibiting MAOA as well. More on the cheese effect next. Now, dosing more than recommended is not a good idea because you'll likely feel jittery, irritable, and get a headache, and feel nausea, and very possibly force your heart rate to dangerous levels. 
The cheese effect. Phenylethylamine is metabolized by the enzyme MAOB. And when monoamine oxidase is inhibited by eating cheese or any other prescriptions or natural MAO inhibitors, the combination can result in potentially dangerous increases in blood pressure. Studies show that selective MAOB inhibition does not produce this cheese effect. Examples of MAOB selective inhibitors include low-dose selegaline or aldepranil, hordenine, oat straw, Chinese licorice root extract, and amber cork tree bark. Now, do not use phenylethylamine if you are using a prescription MAOI or have used one in the last 14 days. And do not use PEA if you have phenylketonuria, or PKU. Too much PEA can cause irritability, nausea, amplified heart rate, jitteriness, and it could be extremely dangerous. Now, remember that phenylethylamine, or PEA, is an endogenous or natural amphetamine, and used irresponsibly could produce the same dangerous side effects as anything else in the amphetamine class of compounds. Phenylethylamine is available in capsules, tablets, and as a bulk powder. Now, do not make the mistake of buying phenylalanine instead of phenylethylamine because it's not the same thing and is easily overlooked when searching for this nootropic. If you buy PEA in powder form, you should invest in a capsule machine and make capsules because PEA is a particularly nasty tasting nootropic supplement. And so that's my report on phenylethylamine. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for phenylethylamine, or PEA. Or click on the link down below this video in the notes section. That'll take you over to my website, Nootropics Expert. And once you're there, you'll find a full transcript for this video. And you'll also find dozens of other articles on all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you haven't already, download your free copy of Secrets of the Optimized Brain. It's nearly 100 pages, and it contains details on 92 of the most popular nootropics used today. And it's finally available, the second edition of my book, Head First, The Complete Guide to Healing and Optimizing Your Brain with Nootropic Supplements. Head First, the second edition, is 962 pages and is available in hardcover, paperback, or for iPad or Kindle. Now, you can get your copy at any major bookseller, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Balboa Press, Apple Books, Walmart, and others. You will find a link to these stores down below in the notes section of this video. And if you could use some personal help with choosing the right nootropics or figuring out how to deal with your own brain health issues, consider booking a personal consultation with me. You'll find a link to my calendar down below in the notes section. Now, if you want to see more videos and all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.